Jack and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Jack Jill Show. It's here that we provide entertaining real estate investment advice. Sometimes. Huh. I'm Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting this week from beautiful, sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about Jack or Jill. You decide. <laughs> <laughs> and you oh have to make my a choice. gosh. By the end of the show, oh you, will, you will decide. No. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> hey, no. you know where this came up? Why, yeah. This, I, I, I uh, so created curious. this show, this episode, because last week we did a show called Jill's Personality. <laughs> Jill's Compelling Personality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the numbers came back. It's our by leaps and bounds. It is our our... I Most listened to by, by two times more than any uh, other episode. We please send that, that to my mom. Listen to it. <laughs> 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 So it prompted me to have this thought. What is it about Jill and why is it so important to be entertaining and to give people what they want? Do people want to talk to you on the phone? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, do people that are buying and that are selling their real estate... Do they want to talk to Jill or do they want to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> I know who I'd like to talk to, and it's not me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's times that we that you're right. I, you've you've walked by my office and you're like, Jesus, she's still on the phone. I'm like, I can't get him off the An hour phone. Hour and a half sometimes. Sometimes. No. And then it ends in a cool transaction where we clear 150 grand. <laughs> some house. That's funny. You know what? You know you, you bring up a good point. You know, most of these transactions and those times that you get on the phone, you're not talking about the deal. You're getting to know the person. You're building a relationship. They and the, and and whatever it is, um, you're winning them over, and they want to sell to you. You know, that's. I, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead and getting to the show a little bit here, but I'll never forget the first time someone told me, you know what, I got another offer the other day. But the reason I'm doing it with you is because I like you. Yeah. I'm like, they're yeah. like, I trust you and I like you. And I'm like, really? You know, they're like, yeah. You know, and it was even like, even not, wasn't a, a far off different offer, but their offer frankly was better, <laughs> but they still liked me. I'm like, I didn't even know this was a possibility. I'm like, wow, cool. Thanks. All right. Before Jill gets too far into the actual show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a question posted by one of our members on the jackjill.com online community. It's free. Okay. This is exactly my point, by the way. Oh, thank you. Because you're just, it's happy and compelling. Thank it's you. Jill's compelling personality. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Rick, Who wants to talk about boring real estate? That's right. Rick G. Uh, writes, Hi, everyone. I've been using Jack and Jill's methods and found, among other things, a land seller in Arizona with five acres priced for $2,300. Is that a piece? Five acres each. Is that what he's asking? Yes. He's not a member, by the way. Oh. And I'm, that's kind oh. of my, I asked the producer to put this in for a reason. Oh. This is not a member. He's been using He's our, our, pro- computer, our yeah. concept or our programs, uh, our concepts for quite some time. And using and reaching and communicating with our other members. I love it. Yeah, me too. Okay. So the seller says he has hundreds of them. So the investment would be significant to me anyway. These are not just barren desert. Looks like roads are in places and people were cutting them up to be lived on based on the satellite images. I don't have enough cash to pull this off. Are there any investors? Oh, this is why he's in our community. Mm-hmm. And writing this, are there any investors out there that would be interested? If anyone's interested, I can get you much more detailed information, of course. One way to do this, Jack has mentioned, is create an LLC for the deal, which I could do if an investor is interested. I would take care of all the work and give the investor the majority of the profit, say 60%. Split and method is negotiable, just looking for a way to do this deal. Something about me. I'm a computer scientist turned entrepreneur. I've been studying Jack and Jill's method for about seven months. I've done one deal with it, which was successful and more than doubled my money. I'm buying as much as I can afford with my own money now. However, I blasted out so many offers a few weeks ago that I can't fund all the stuff that's coming back. Okay. That's congratulations, so by the way. normal. That's awesome. Rick, congratulations. Cool. You did everything right. That's perfect. We do not want you to sign up for stuff unless, unless you test it and believe in it and know yeah. it works for yourself first. But I have to say it. Now you're ready. You're, you're ready. <laughs> and I'll tell you what you're going to get is you're going to get the money that you need and the contacts that you need and all of that. Once the you support uh, that you need. Once you pull the trigger on this. In fact, by now, he might even be a member. He might even be. Well, Pro- he, might, he probably is. Or at least he's found somebody to help him fund these deals. Right. 
So you did everything perfectly, but I, and it's clear that you want to take this thing to the next level. And that's what we're for. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not here. We are not here to sign people up for some silly education which course. Uh, and that's it. And live off of that money. That's not right. what Jill and I do. You know, we create partnerships and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why we do the show. That's why we have this whole Jack and Jill concept. Well, and the support. A real job is to buy and sell real estate, which we do. I mean, let's, let's look at it to all these other companies that we've created, like Title Mind. What's that for? Help you close your deals. You know, that's one. You know, um, Parcel Fact. Help you find these properties. There's another one. Exactly. You know, uh, Offers to Owners. Take the mystery out of getting, getting this data, you know, into a, into a, uh, a mailer. We'll do it for you. Don't even worry about it. And if you don't even have the data, call offers owners. We'll do that for you too. So, you know, this is, this is it. We're here spreading the word that whatever property that you're looking for, you know, it's true when Jack says it's on the top of our jackjill.com, isn't it? Community, it says changing the way, you know, that we buy and sell real estate. estate. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. There's, there's great. And this is awesome. So congratulations. Perfect. Yeah. Today's topic. Let's get, let Jill get back to it. Oh, sorry. Jack or Jill? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I got, I got, sorry. I got uh, tied up with work related stuff. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Today's topic, Jack or Jill? That's the question. This is the meat of the show. You know, normally you don't want to take me off the order. Oh, she's working now. Let her go. Let her go. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Jack, you know, this is so funny. I walk into our office and it's funny because I can kind of tell there's times that they're happy to see me, but then they're, it's like, cause we do have a good time when I walk in the office, I can tell they all, everybody says hello and we, but then I, and then I, but I can just see that go, well, we're going to waste an hour now. Here it comes. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, That's exactly what I don't need to hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's my office. Cause and it's we Jill's do just compelling fine. personality. We do great. You know what? That's exactly my point. You if you what? just sit around and work all the time and you analyze data in a dark room somewhere How and you don't do the stuff that boring. Jill does. Let me tell you that this is the, this is what happened. For a decade, almost 12 years, I ran the company by myself and then Jill got involved. And it was an accident. Jill, the, <laughs> Jill got involved because... By accident. It was truly an accident. She it's just like inadvertently kind of got... Jill and I knew each other socially before we were business partners. And so she was kind of just lurking, you know? And so I, finally I said, you know what? Let's give her a bunch of property and see what happens. Well, you can tell the rest of your story yourself. <laughs> her, our sales tripled. Uh, so my point it's is... It's kind of funny. I was off to the side over here. He's like, well, how much money you got going on over there? And I kind of showed him. He's like, what the heck are you <laughs> she doing? She took a group of assets that I thought we were going to just kind of write off. Not write off, but probably break even on and tri- tripled or quadrupled the whole scenario. So... <laughs> My point is that, you know, your chances are, listener, you're one or the other. You know, you're like me, where it's all data driven. You've got you're the brains behind the thing, and you're an engineer, engineer your way through everything. And then you kind of let price do the do the work for you. Mm-hmm. Or you're like Jill. Either way, you can make it work. Mm-hmm. And if you've got somebody yeah, in your both life who's opposite, best. yeah, that's perfect then. Mm-hmm. So that's good. I joke about the, you know, the title's a joke. I love Choose it. Choose between one of us. So here's well, here's my point back to the office thing. So I walk in the office and yeah, shall we laugh and have a good time and everything. But you know what? It picks everybody up and now they're like, the next thing you know, they're inspired again and they're working harder and they're working faster and it, it, it really does make a difference. So tell me what goes on in your office, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what goes on in my office nothing like that and I'm not joking because the people that work with me that I've I've chosen to to work with are not, are smarter than me at what they do oh so they don't need motivation um like that they need to they need projects that inspire them they're inspired by the projects I ask them to do and the creative work that they're doing I had one person that works for me recently say this is my creative outlet. Really? Yeah, like, and, and he was talking about it, like he's Van, Vincent Van Gogh, you know? Like, mm-hmm. and so he's, this one p- person specifically is very self-rewarded by creative, uh, you know, p- creative projects, website stuff, and things like that. I, you know, I guess that's a great question, Joel. Everybody's got their thing. Mm-hmm. You know what really jacks me up? Buying cheap property running through data, spending a week on doing a perfect mailer or as perfect as I can get it, sending offers out and getting buying a bunch of real estate 
That is what motivates me. And doing it efficiently and effectively where everybody wins, where the seller's happy, the buyer's really, the buyers are always happy. Mm -hmm. And where I'm happy. And it happens in that order. The seller has to be happy. The buyer has to be pretty happy. And I have to be happy. And, And I will do a deal where I'm not happy just to get it done sometimes. Yeah, I don't like those deals. I know. I have a hard time with that. I want everybody to be happy too. I'm going to be happy. I want the seller happy. I don't really pull the trigger if I'm not really happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no problem saying that. Now, is that, I don't know if that's me or or life experience or well, I'll tell you where what, I am in my really career are. right now. We don't need to do the next week's deals, yeah. but we do them anyway. And so that really changes your attitude for, for the yeah. better, I think. That's true. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking, okay, I'm back to you and me and, you know, how we run things, how different it is. I think that says a lot about us. So your office, your office looks different, sounds different. Mm -hmm. The people are different. The setup is different. The fact that you guys don't really have real phones is different. We don't talk to each other. I know. There's no, oh man, I'll never forget. This is a good story. We just Skype each other all day. Oh my, that's. We don't verbally talk to each other. That's what I have to share. There was a time back in Scottsdale, remember the offices on the lake. But when we, were, when we were newly starting and we had several rooms, but we could see each other through the rooms. We, we would often have the doors open and we could see through, I could see Jack and like, he's not that far. I could talk, <laughs> but heaven forbid you actually talk. This is when I first brought me in and I went, what is with this yeah. guy and the way he runs things? It was so darn funny. I have two funny things to share, please. So one is I learned it was don't do not dare utter a word. You Skype him. I don't care if it's are you ready for lunch now. You Skype that. <laughs> and so and then and the other funny thing was this is good. <laughs> I don't mean to throw you under the no, bus. No, it doesn't. But I, I think all is, of this is true. This is so funny. I'm not. If I if I didn't if I wasn't proud of it, I would change it. Okay. Oh, this is true. And then I gotta share. I'll share something else good though. Okay. So then then I learned. Okay. So I learned. Don't talk. Okay. Got that one. Check. Then. I think all along I was plotting, someday when it's my show, I'm going to be doing this over here. This is how I'm going to run my team. And that's exactly what has that's happened. That's what happened. And that's why we're in two separate zip codes even. So, okay. So then plotting. our offices. So then uh, Jack has this no paper rule. And I'm like, what? Is this no paper? <laughs> he would come along. We still along. have that in my office. Oh, you guys have that? It's a, we, have a, we have a pretty strict no paper rule, but I'll tell you, there's a few, there's a few caveats. She means paperless. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, what Jack would come along. If, if, I, wrote a, if I wrote down uh, even how much money I was spent on the lunch order on a sticky note. No, no, no. And I threw it in the trash. There's no sticky notes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let me finish my story. You wouldn't even allow that. Jack would come along and take the everything that was paper related out of the trash and put it in the shredder one by one. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this guy doing? You know, it was just, and I, I understand that's a pet peeve of yours, the paper and the paper list. And I was still learning, but what was so funny, I was so mad at him for, for like, I'm like, I really have to put this in the stupid shredder. I was mad at you. Like mad? mad? I was, I'm like, so I was like, so I ate a banana. And I, at my desk, I was eating a banana. I said, and I looked to the guy across the room at the time, um, you know who I'm talking about. And I said, I'm about to shove this banana peel in the shredder. <laughs> Which was so true. I wanted to jam up the sh- shredder with a banana peel just to show you how much this was driving me crazy. Because I didn't, I didn't really understand too. I'm like, all right. So I get it. It's okay. No, and I have adopted that. So in our office, I mean, we have a file cabinet and it's full of supplies, you know, like, you know, cups and stuff like that little things we don't so i know you don't but we have but we also have title mind so we do have paper and paper clips that's why we can I was just and mail say supplies that. so i do have to print and out a deed the reason i can get away with this is because i just call title mind to close all the deals right yeah we do it for you here's the thing with sticky notes and all that here's the root root of it <laughs> where does this come from if i have something to do or i need to be re- remind myself to do something i have a whole system set up for that i have a calendar uh, crm scenario where i, I don't put a sticky note on my monitor mm. I think it's a bad habit really yeah it's a bad habit is what it is okay. if I need to remind myself to do something it's usually going to happen I don't know ne- later today tomorrow next week I schedule it on the calendar and it gets done you know I do understand that and I've embraced that and adopted that Jack and I, I it's one of the things I love about you <laughs> so <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but I but uh, sometimes you just need to write something down right now. Like, okay, you know what? Let's be honest with you. Okay, listener, Jack's computer, like now on his desk, no paper. Me, I have a notepad right here. I know. Because I'm writing little notes about the show. And when I'm done, I'm going to take it and I'm going to shred it. <laughs> okay. You know, whatever works. Whatever works. I, I don't. It sounds like I'm an ogre and I walk around hovering no, people's desks and no, I don't do that at all. No, 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 no. I don't. No. You are, you I are. have my way and that's it. And there's a reason that I have an office with a door in it. No. Well, you know what's going to say though? It's funny. It's it's interesting about our personalities. Okay. That's how you run your office and everything. No, and I get it. It's very efficient and streamlined and it's, no, it's good. My office is, is different and it works for us. But, and then what's so neat is outside of, what's funny is I was thinking outside of work, our friends are so alike. Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah, they are. We have it. So I that why that is. Isn't that interesting? We have different work environments, but socially, when you get us away from work and in our home mm. and everything, very similar. Yeah, I mean, I'm a completely different person at work than I am uh, socially, mm-hmm. or even on this show. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why Jill. That's where Jill comes in because she deals with people at work, both. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, on the employee side and customers and buyers and sellers and all of that mm-hmm. and trains people and hires people and I mean I don't I hire my people mm-hmm. my people and I I mean we have we finish each other's sentences we just mm-hmm. we think that way exactly. and I don't hover over their desks at all I just expect them to get stu- stuff done and they do mm-hmm. I don't, we don't even have really have business hours in my my end of things they just know what they're supposed to do Got and it. that's it I don't care where, where they do it or what they do. We all have notebook computers, for example. Your team all has desktop computers because they need to be there answering phones and processing It's stuff. a whole different environment yeah. with mine. Ours is really kind of an IT. It's more of an, more of, of an engineering IT what motivates you to be creative. There's a lot, a lot more creativity that goes on in my world, on my end of what we do, than I think you people realize that's very interesting I don't think your people are being creative I think they're processing and talking to people and it's not that they can't or not that's just not what 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 uh, we feel in the company yeah I mean we are getting this stuff done that's that's it I mean it's true you're the CEO on the COO yeah you're you're out there bringing up you're out there dreaming up the stuff right you're really good at that right and really the the lead content and all that and then I'm here, you know, and I like to do that stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm really good at, you bring, you come up with it. I think I put it into place a little bit. We both put it into place and then my team carries it out. It's more than anything, more than anything right now, what I work on is finding new markets to, yeah. to send mail, to send offers. Yeah. And that's very creative. It is. And it's something that, I mean. There, I have constantly so testing new methodology for mm-hmm. mailing and pricing. Nobody can do it better than you, Jack. There's probably somebody. I mean, there are people, I, I know for a fact, there's a handful of people in our group that, that literally make more money flipping real estate than we do. Probably because they don't have to spend time on this show. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. And they're just sitting there doing that stuff. But I don't know who's answering their phone. Well, uh, they're going to be just better than you. That's really nice, to, nice of you to say. You're welcome. And you know what you can do with that banana? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Woo! Well, you've no. done it again. <laughs> well, you've done it again. Wasted another th- oh, 20 f- minutes or so listening to our silliness. That you can never get back. <laughs> <laughs> Join us tomorrow where we discuss how, uh, how we accomplish the 24-month millionaire. That's our number Ooh, one question right now. Oh, I love Jack, it. Jack, you mentioned 24-month millionaire what am I on the show. What? That? Where is that? Where can I find him? Get, oh, cool. So. And we answer your question, should you have one? Other than that, on, post it on the jackjill.com, our online community. Go to our website and you will find it. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. That was fun. That's some classic stuff, Joe. Those are good stories. I remember uh-huh. that, some of that stuff. Yeah. That's really good. I'll never forget how the banana peel. God, that was so funny. I was so tempted to shove it in there. I oh, it was so Jill and I, so Jill had a regular job, and I was obviously doing this stuff full time, and we nailed a deal. We made a ton of money. Yeah. And so she quit her job. And I love, by the way, when we get reports from our members on yeah, this it's one of my the happiest time where you make enough money where you're like you know what it's just time it's, we've been doing it for a year two years whatever 
I know we can easily live off this now. I believe in it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Jill and I had that almost a, it was almost 10 years ago now that that happened. And yeah. so we made the mistake of working in the same office for yeah. eight, eight to 10 hours a day. And that's when I learned about how a lot about how she works. She learned a lot about me and we decided to work in separate zip cuts. Yes. <laughs> and that's totally normal, <laughs> normal and natural, I think. Exactly. Don't you? That's I mean, true. I don't. I, I'm sure people wonder, how the heck do we do this without killing each other? I mean, I wish you could show, <laughs> show on that. Oh, how do we do this without killing each other? Yeah, because I, you know what? I feel qualified after this amount of time. I do too. To actually provide some pretty I incredible too. We advice. could share some of our counseling sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could just have a whole show that's called Group Counseling. That's it. Group counseling for couples who work with each other. Oh, there we go. That's the name of the show. (laughs) I love it. That's awesome. (laughs) Hey, share the fun and listen to that show coming up by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you are listening. Hey, while you're at it, please rate us there. We We are are Jack Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. To buy undervalued property.